Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is first lecture of Foodie uh, uh, Spring Boot backend project course. In this lecture, we are basically going to set up the whole thing, right? The IDE, uh, the GitHub, and basic project setup, right? I'll also explain in this lecture that how I'll be communicating with you regarding the project, like how I'll be providing you exercises and the solution of those, right? Things like that. So we'll uh, get ready for the whole project setup in this lecture and at the end of it also let's create one endpoint hello and uh, hello world endpoint let's say right let's create an endpoint that says hello all right so let's get started so let's see what we are going to uh, basically set up in this lecture so first we'll set up the our uh, IDE, right uh, we'll be using intellij idea community uh, community edition which one uh, that one is free and uh, of course uh, we'll do the basic project initialization for spring boot then we will do the github uh, project setup uh, all of the project will be available on the github and as we progress through the uh, through the course i'll keep on adding details there on the github along with the exercises and of course postman setup this we are going to use for testing our apis and also for you know uh, end to end testing right so this is the thing that we are going to cover in this lecture so let's start with the intellij idea github uh, and GitHub setup. So if you see here, just go here. First of all, this is the repository. I'll be sharing the link of this repository in the comment section. Right. So this is the repository that we'll be following. I'll be adding all of my codes here. You can go to, go and read the readme file. What what it is, what we are going to do. Everything I've added here. Right. So in this repository, there'll be two uh, folders: backend and frontend. Frontend we'll add in the next course. Right. In this course, we are only going to cover the backend part. So in the backend part, you'll find all of your uh, all of your code, right? Along with the exercises and all. So go ahead, copy it and clone it, and we'll start working on that. And uh, uh, before that, now important part is that here you can see we are on the main branch of uh, of this repository, and I'll keep on adding multiple branches for different exercise. All right, so you can switch to different branches to get the different exercises. As of now, I have added only one exercise because we are just in the beginning phase of this course, right? So basically this will be the code repository and in the branches of this course, I'll be providing you different exercises. For example, if you switch the exercise here, let me, let me explain that in the IDE itself. The IDE, as I said, will be using IntelliJ IDEA. Just search for IntelliJ IDEA uh, download or community edition. Just go for, to the first link and you'll reach here. You don't have to download this one. This is ultimate version, which of course you have to pay for. We are not going to use that. We'll be using the community edition. This is completely free, right? So you can download it and install it, right? And also, if you want to use this, I have uh, a code, you can use that and you, you'll get a subscription for 30, uh, three months for free, right? If you want to use that, but I would recommend using this one. This is completely free and serve all the purposes that are required for us for this project, right? So, yeah. So this is the IntelliJ idea. You can download it and then we can get started with it, right? So after download, we'll have this thing. Then you can uh, create your project here or clone repository. You, you get the option of cloning repository directly from here. We'll use that in a moment. Yeah, so this is the repository. To clone this repository, just go here in the code, copy this, right? Link to the, the kit. Then go back to community uh, uh, idea, uh, sorry, <laughs> IntelliJ idea community edition. Just clone the repository as from there. We are using git, right? And just uh, enter the git link, right? Uh, choose the location wherever you want and just clone and you'll get the whole code. I've already done that and this is my project, right? Let me show you. So this is the project. As of now, let me just close everything. Yeah. So this is how it would look like. This is the backend inside of it. In the source directory, in the main, you'll find all your code, right? In the backend part. And this is the readme file. Now, important thing is you can see this is the version control. You'll get all the details here, right? And also here you see you are currently on the main branch, right? We'll see locally we have main branch and exercise branch. Also on the remote, we have main and exercise. So if we switch to the exercise branch, I'm explaining you how, how you will get the details of the exercise. So just switch to the exercise that you want to, you know, uh, solve the tasks off just switch to that branch you can change it from here if you are not able to see that what you can do you can click here go to git 
right? And then you can see uh, branch branch details here, yeah, branches, and then you'll get the other branches and you can change to whichever branch you want. Now we are in the exercise one branch, right? So here in the exercise, uh, each exercise branch, you'll have readme.empty file, which will show you all of the tasks. So there are two tasks, you can complete those. So this will be providing you exercises. For each exercise, you can simply go to that uh, branch of that exercise and in the readme.md file, you'll find the exercises. Right? Once you get the exercise, you can go ahead and solve this problem. You don't have to actually make changes and of course, uh, <coughs> push the changes back. You don't have to do that. Just change it and uh, and see if it works. Along with the readme.md file, I'll also provide solution.md file, which will provide you the solution of that exercise. All right. Let's get back to the main branch. Uh, yeah, main branch back. We are in the main branch. All right. So this is the IntelliJ idea that we'll be using, right? ID. And after that, ID is done, project setup. I've already explained. Uh, GitHub, yeah, explained already. And then Postman. Uh, sim simple, just as we did for that. Yeah, just search for Postman download and you'll get to this link where you can actually download uh, Postman, right? Once you have it, this is how it looks like. If not, just go to home, okay? This is how it looks like. And after that, you can go to a workspace. You can create a new workspace here. I have already created, I'll rename it later. So just go to the workspace and here you can create a collection of uh, REST API calls, right? So if it is not already there, just click on this, create a blank collection. I've already created, uh, created a collection, 4D APIs. And here I have added Hello World API. Once you have that, you'll get this kind of window. Where you can name it what the API you want to name. I have named it one dot Hello World. Usually, I I I uh, I add a, a numbering also with my uh, APIs one two three four right. So Hello World, this is the first one. And then you can choose what method you are using: get method, post, put, patch, delete, so on and so forth. Here you can provide the URL. There's so many more things that you can add. We'll talk about them later. So this is your Postman. This will be the tool that we'll be using for REST APIs uh, and also for end-to-end -end testing, all right? So important thing done. And one important thing, I want all of you to, yeah, just let me go here. Uh, I want all of you to code uh, basically clone this repository, right? And because I have already uh, done the project setup, so you will get, the Spring Boot project uh, inside here, but inside the backend part, right? This is my Spring Boot project. But if you want to initialize the Spring Boot project yourself, let me uh, explain that. I can do that too. Just go to uh, spring.io, uh, start.spring.io. Okay, just go there. Here you can initialize your project. It will generate uh, a zip file and then you can uh, unzip that and just import the same project into the IntelliJ idea and you'll get it. For example, I'm going to use Maven uh, uh, build tool and then Java language, of course. I'm using 3.4.3, which is the stable version. All of these are snapshots. And uh, here you can define the group. I call it code and code. Now fit name of foodie. Let it be name also. This will be the name of the application, right? So basically, if I show you here, 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 in the main, this is the name of the application, okay? So let it be this 4D application and just change the description if you want to and package name. I think usually it's like this, uh, yeah. Dot 4D I've also added, okay, let it be that way. And then you can choose which, which, uh, which version of Java you're using and then packaging jar or what. And here you can add dependencies. If you want to create a web application for REST APIs, you can directly add web, Spring Web. That's done, right? It will add that. Once you are done with this, just generate and you will get the uh, zip file. You can unzip that and import in here and you will get that project, okay? So they are, uh, this is the way you can initialize Spring Boot project. So we are done with the uh, project initialization. We have also talked about getting uh, started with IntelliJ idea and Postman, right? So we are done with that. As I said, let's create a REST endpoint uh, using this project, huh? and let's also test it in Postman. 
uh, one of the most important part why Spring Boot is so famous because how easily it allows you to do things. For example, I want to add a uh, rest endpoint, right? Uh, slash hello, let's say, which prints hello world. So easy to do that. Just add a new class. Let's call it controller. And uh, as this is a controller, right? Uh, as this is a controller, you can add edit rest controller why rest controller i'll explain everything in the uh in the lecture right in the upcoming lecture we are only going to create a simple hello world application right so this tells the spring boot that this is a rest controller right and inside the rest controller you define your endpoints for example uh let's say at the end, get mapping so get mapping is used to define endpoint which you can access using the get method right uh i can define the endpoint let's say hello okay and here you can define a function which returns a string hello and return hello world okay so i've defined a function which returns hello world i have annotated it with get mapping to let the controller know let the spring application know that this mapping slash hello uh remember the base address is localhost colon 8080 right default port number is 8080 you can change the port number i'll explain that later so it does it that uh, the slash hello mapping should be mapped to this function and what does this function do it returns a string so when you uh, make a call to this right it will return a string hello world as simple as that and you can call this function basically you can call this endpoint from the client which is in our case uh, this uh, postman or you can you can make the calls from the browser also so if i run this application hopefully we don't get any error I don't want to debug it right now. Okay. So parsing, da da da, things are happening. Okay. Okay, it's done. See, here, Tom gets started at 8080. The default port number is 8080. If you want, you can change that. I'll explain that in next lecture. So the application is up and running. So if I go, this localhost column 8080 is the base address, and I have defined a mapping for slash hello. Okay, base slash hello. If I send a get method, get request there. I get hello world, right? What we have defined there. So you see how easy it is in Spring Boot to add an endpoint. All of the things that I've used here, I'll explain that in uh, in the next lecture because all of these require great, great details, right? So like rest controller, get mapping, everything. I'll explain that in the next lecture, right? So this is it. How you can set up your uh, your project, right? For for a backend project that we have. This is a, uh, so this is it for this lecture. Thank you guys for watching. Until the next video drops, keep coding. Thank you.